Yeah, uh, oh, I cannot show my video, but it's fine. <laughs> so hi everyone, so here is Jun Wen. I'm a senior researcher in health economics in Health Economic Research Center, University of Oxford. Today I'm going to present how to estimate costs associated with disease model state using the generalized linear model in R. So uh, I think everyone is very familiar with uh, decision analytic uh, disease models. So usually we can represent uh, we can present that using the Markov models. So we have uh, four states. For example, here we have a no MI or stroke, and then patient, uh, people may move to with MI but no stroke, and with stroke but no MI or with both MI and stroke. So if we want to see the progression over time, so we know that there are people, for example, there are people starting with no MI or stroke and they are possible to move to any one of them or remain on the uh, current state, uh, no MI or stroke in the next cycle. And if for the people who move to no MI or stroke, they can continue to have the same possible uh, possibility to move the other health state. And for people move to MI but no stroke, it can move to with both MI and stroke or remain in the same state. It's similar for the others. Uh, so with the decision analytic disease models, we will need additional information so that we can perform the economic evaluations. So with this model, we can uh, predict the disease model state progression. And we also need the cost of a disease model state and the quality of life disease model state and also the treatment effect on the progression so that we can perform the economic evaluation of the interventions to calculate the total cost and qualities under intervention and control so that we can calculate the incremental cost per quality gain by the intervention. And in this, uh, in this section, so I'll focus more on the cost of the Z model state. So it's to estimate costs associated with no MI, each health, each model state. And so, and for this uh, uh, presentation specifically, we want to understand the heterogeneous cost of the Z model state. Uh, so here we have four model states to estimate, uh, cost of four model states to estimate, but we may know that they are, uh, the cost may be different by the uh, people's characteristics, such as sex. So usually like men have a higher cost in the, in, in the corresponding. And we may need to consider different costs by more complex, uh, complicated these states. Here we have uh, with MI or, uh, or with stroke, but we can also consider it uh, in more details. We can have the NI in the same year, MI uh, myocardial infarction in one year ago, two years ago, three years ago. We know that like, usually at the same year of the event, usually the cost is much higher than the later years. And each, uh, each, of, uh, the, the, each of the value of the M MI states uh, and the stroke state can combine into one unique disease state. And so specifically, we estimate the cost over a fixed uh, period. So here the cost can be healthcare costs or just hospital costs or primary care costs or the other total societal costs. And we want to understand the co estimate the cost associated with the disease model state for an individual with specific characteristics. So we can say, usually we use a data set with a format similar as below. So we focus here, we focus uh, because we, for each uh, participants or each people, we, we want to get the cost of each year. And we have the disease state descriptor. So each uh, is uh, the, each descriptor, we have different values and in the, uh, the combination of uh, the unique uh, disease uh, state combination is a dis uh, distinct disease state that we are going to estimate the cost with if we want to understand how the uh, people's characteristic will have impact on the cost as well. Uh, to estimate costs, cost, so we need to uh, understand the features of the cost data. First of all, we know that data uh, cost data usually have large number of zero costs or for some kind of cost data, for example, hospital costs. Uh, roughly, there are maybe uh, 10 to uh, 10 to 20 percent uh, probability of having any hospital costs in people uh, age 40 to 70 without previous cardiovascular events. So we can see that the cost data is is largely uh, this uh, the distribution is largely distorted, and by removing those 
zero cost, we still see that there are heavy white hand tail distributions because of some people's, some heavy healthcare users. And to be, uh, and to general recommendations on uh, estimating these kind of costs is to use a simple methods when we have quite a large data set and to adjust a small number of key data issues when we have a smaller data set. And generalized linear model, GRM has uh, such features as the simple methods to adjust those issues. Firstly, it can adjust the linearity issue with linear predictor and the dependent variables by fitting the link function between the linear predictor and the outcome, and can accommodate the scrutinies in the distribution of the residual error by fitting the variance function or selecting the corresponding uh, distribution. So the first one is the linear model. So usually we have the response and we want to use those covariate to predict the response. And the second model is the generalized linear model by we use the same formula, same data, but differently we choose a different family. So the families can pose by the distribution and the link function and Gaussian uh, identity link re represents a, a linear regression model. And we can uh, choose, uh, so here's the link function and here's the variable function. And we can choose a different family and easily using the generalized linear model in R. There are key steps uh, to, uh, to perform the statistical modeling of the cost associated with the model state. So we start with uh, preparing the data sets and uh, including the generate raw data set, handle the missing data and sense data and specify the covariate. And uh, we need to uh, I, uh, select, you, uh, uh, select the candidate statistic models and the candidate query, and then to perform tests to choose the good uh, specification. And then we compare promising models to select the final models by doing the query selections, uh, final model selections. And lastly, maybe we need to also consider the interaction between query as well. And with the final model, we can use it to predict cost for a given individual's characteristics. And we can also estimate the uh, effect of a disease state on the cost. Uh, in this presentation, so I will go through an illustrated examples by modeling the hospital cost associated with cardiovascular event using R. So the research question is that we want to, we want to estimate the annual hospital care costs associated with uh, cardiovascular and mortality events. So here, these events are as this. Uh, for each uh, descriptor, myocardial infarction focus on no, no MI, same year of MI, and one, two, three years after the MI, and stroke similarly, and vascular death and no vascular death. And we want to consider a wide range of people without previous cardiovascular events, including the characteristic, including age, sex, uh, cholesterol level, BMI, and others. Uh, the data used for this illustration is a uh, synthetic uh, analytical data set that uh, it is generated with uh, uh, 10,000 participants, each have 10 annual periods with columns. So the data set format is quite similar as the one that you see before. So we have the response is the cost in the year and the covariate is the disease model state and the characteristics such as uh, age and sex and the others. And <clears throat> because we have already generated the analytical data set, a synthetic data set, so we don't have the we don't uh, don't need to I, I would not show the raw data set generation and also the uh, imputation don't have those issues. So here we just uh, uh, in 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 this step of uh, specifying the covariate. So we have dif uh, have different purpose. First is to improve performance. If we know the functional form of the continuous covariate, we may, may use it. For example, we can use the uh, identity link, log link, or the others. If the relationship is complex, maybe we need to consider the other things like such as spline, polynomial, uh, and the uh, categorizations. For this quick way, we may need to consider whether we should combine some category. Uh, another purpose of uh, specifications of covariate is to facilitate interpretations. You already would like to standardize the continuous covariate and the set reference levels for the discrete covariate. For example, here is the raw data set that we have. So we have the uh, uh, the in, in the group of people that we model. 
uh, the mean age is uh, 56 with a SD of A. And so for sex, they are the, uh, 56% are female. And in the analytical data set, we want to specify so that it can be easier for us to interpret models. So we will set, uh, we will uh, modify age into like <clears throat> standard diet age by an age 60 and uh, per 10, 10 years increase. And for, for sex, we set it as a uh, female as a reference. So at, at the final model, we can easily interpret it, the intercept. And so in R, it's quite simple. You just uh, do the calculations for the continuous covariate and for set uh, using factor to set the levels. So the first one is the reference level for each discrete uh, covariate. And the candidate statistics models, we uh, show six two-part model with the first part modeling the probability of incurring any cost. So we, uh, and the second part modeling the cost conditional on any cost incurring. So for the first part, uh, so we just simply do some calculation to, to change the response into one or zero and using a family of a binomial with a link of logic to perform the logistic regression. And for the second part, we just uh, select those costs is greater than zero and to model the cost conditional on any cost incurring and then to perform the GLM on each candidate GLM. And then we also use uh, another one one part model uh, to illustrate. Uh, for the one part model, you just directly use the whole data set to perform the analysis. Uh, with those uh, candidate statistics model, we need to perform the specification test to, to choose the promising one. So they are tests to test for the link function. And then we also have the test for the variant function. And because we need to perform the test for multiple models, so I for each uh, for each test, I wrote I wrote a function for that to perform the test, and then we have the final results uh, of each test. So because from the modified path test, uh, we we the modified path test indicate that gamma distribution is a appropriate uh, distribution for uh, for modeling this data, and there are no much the uh, there is no test indicating uh, the 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 link function is inappropriate. So we will use both uh, candidates uh, GLM identity and GLM uh, gamma log as the candidate uh, models and. After that, we need to select where we reliably uh, predicting response. And so in, in the example, I use uh, just a stepwise backward selection uh, uh, because here is a little bit complicated than the normal uh, selection process because we have, uh, we use multiple records for each participant. Uh, so we will need to use a cluster to calculate cluster robust uh, standard error. So I wrote, the whole uh, stepwise backwards selection process in uh, allowing us to generate the clus cluster robust standard error to perform the covariate selection. And here is the selection results for each model. So it's lo uh, part one logistic model and two promising uh, second part of the two part models and the one part GLM, we perform the covariate selection and here are the covariate selection results. And then we need to use the final models of these uh, promising models and to perform the performance test to compare the predicted cost against the observed cost. So the same, I wrote the function to uh, calculate each uh, test results and then to perform to, to do it for each models. And here are the final result. Actually, we don't see much difference between the first one and second one and because uh, Identity link is really easier to interpret, so we choose the uh, identity link one, and then yeah, and then one part model with uh, Gaussian identity, so it's with linear regression model. You will have problem of predicting, possibly to predict negative costs. So eventually, we choose a two part model as the final models. With the final models, we can tabulate the model coefficient, so it's just a simple calculation, and then we have here. So here it's very important that at the beginning we set the reference level. So we will know that the intercept represent the intercept of the reference level. So it's the female sex and then the people uh, at age uh, at the SBP uh, systolic blood pressure of 140 
and no prior diabetes with an uh, age of 60. So this is the uh, probability of incurring costs. Uh, and the intercept, because it's logistic regression, so this is odd. We need to do some conversion to get probability. And then is the cost, if they have any hospital costs incurred, then the cost will be, the mean cost will be 2000 something. And then it, when we have the, the developed models, we, we can do the individual predictions. Firstly, we need to prepare the profiles of individual as the model input. So here's an example of these uh, patients that we are going to predict the cost for them. And firstly, pre uh, prepare the, uh, the profiles and then we convert the profile to the profile that is used in the models. And then to use the model to calculate the cost, firstly, we calculate the probability so the probability firstly we calculate the odd and then convert it into a probability. And then we also calculate the cost conditional any incurring and then we estimate the predicted cost will be this number. And we can also use the model to estimate the marginal effect or average cost associated with this model state. So we you, uh, calculate two mean costs, one assuming that all the people have the conditions, like for example, having the SMMI and second one assuming the original data set none of them have the conditions. And then we also write a function to do the calculation and then to predict the cost for these uh, group of peoples. And then we can get the final results. So the people with MI, what is the cost in, uh, in, in, this, in, in the year and one year ago, two years ago. And then we, uh, because this is a nonlinear model, so we will need to, you, eventually we use a bootstrapping to get the standard error for that. Uh, and before we also saw that there are key steps of uh, statistical modeling and of course associated with these models. So in the published paper we explained in detail the uh, in detail how we what what we should consider the, in each step. And we also have uh, illustrated examples so showing each step of uh, of of the analysis and then have all, all the code available for these analysis, including the code for the analysis and also the figures as well. And at the beginning, we showed that, uh, so for economic evaluations, we need these informations. So previously we have, uh, our team has published a paper to uh, uh, publish a work generating uh, micro simulation models and qualitative models and including the treatment effect so that we can estimate the starting uh, if the impact of starting on the long-term cardiovascular risk and the, uh, and the quality of life. And then we also have the cost models to perform the, to, to predict the cost for individual level healthcare costs. And combine all of them, we have uh, published uh, economic relations of uh, starting on, uh, on categories of peoples in the UK using this in a uh, micro simulation model. And so this here is the final remarks. I hope it's a useful starting point for researchers who plan to conduct costing studies. And I hope it's also, I hope there is also more and more costing studies published to support HTA activities. Um, so here's the end, thank you.